If you're trying to grow your online coaching business, you have to watch this video because things have changed a lot over the last 12 months. What used to work extremely well doesn't anymore. I'm talking about the content strategies, the DM and sales scripts, and even the ads that were working a few months ago have all changed. The online coaching space is experiencing a big shift right now. And I'm gonna cover the new way to grow an online coaching business so you can help more people make more money and not be so stressed out all the time with the ups and downs that come with some of these outdated strategies. The same strategies I'm gonna cover in this training are the same strategies that we've used with our clients like Ben, who went from $550 a month to $12,000 a month in just three months and then later on went to hit his first $20,000 a month as a solo coach with just one virtual assistant. Or Sarah, who's a running coach, who was able to take her business from two to 3K a month to 10K a month in four months while working full-time as a nurse. So I'm gonna take you on a journey today and show you the new model so you can replicate it in your own business to drive more growth. Let's switch over to my computer and get started. All right, so we're gonna be using a Google Doc to cover this. I'm gonna be talking about the four components of the new business model that we're finding a lot of success in right now in the online coaching space. Okay, we're gonna kickstart this off by talking about offers and pricing, okay? So right now, what we're seeing is that monthly recurring revenue is the new gold. Now, up to this point, um, a lot of business coaches and even businesses have been really relying heavily on paid in fulls, two pays, three pays. And while that's awesome, especially when you're getting started out because you can get a lot of cash up front and you can reinvest it back into the business, very valuable. What the problem is, what people don't tell you is that every time you do that, the next month you start over again. And it can feel like you're on a hamster wheel of making new sales. Got a market, got a sell, got a market, got a sell, just to stay afloat. But if you can switch to a model, and I'll tell you the model that I, I really like for health coaches in a second. Um, if you can switch to a model that really is monthly recurring revenue based, it can really reduce the amount of nerves and anxiousness and uh, worry and all the stuff that you feel by that other paid in full model, okay? So what I'm finding that works really well, let's, go, let's just jump into it, is if you can do a 500 to $1,000 initiation fee or a startup fee, and then jump into recurring revenue at between three to uh, $400 a month, or really three to 500, I'm gonna say. Uh, three to 400 is a good starting point, but $500 is great for a health coaching offer if you can get it up there. But yeah, three to four, $500 a month on going. Now, I like this better than packages, two pay, three pay, all of that, because you're getting an initial lump sum at the start, and what this does is it covers your acquisition cost. Okay, acquisition cost is how much money does it cost for me to acquire a client? If it costs me, if I run ads and it costs me $500 to get a client, I want that $500 as fast as possible so that I break even and any month they stay on is pure profit. Now, the reason I have 500 to 1,000 down for this is that most health coaches on average, I'm gonna say on average, I've seen, I've seen them up and down. It's gonna cost you probably about 500 bucks to sign a client at scale, okay? $500 to get a client that's worth at least $2,000, okay? We wanna get at least a, a three to a six X return is kind of our, our, our gold standard there. But if I can, if it costs me $500 to get a client, if my initiation fee is $1,000 or month one fee, startup fee is $1,000, and then it's three to four hundred dollars a month with a three to six month commitment. That's excellent because I just doubled my money, right? If it cost me five hundred dollars to get a client, they pay me a thousand. I doubled my money, and everything else from this point on is going to be essentially profit. I don't have well, actually not profit because you might have other expenses, but it's not going to cost you uh, anything else to have those 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 um, that the client continue on. I really like this model. I'm seeing more and more uh, benefit to this. Yeah, I think there's a part of it that has to do with the economy, but also, man, just monthly recurring revenue is really nice. 
I've seen a lot of health coaches or just coaches in the space who will have 50, 60 K months and they're bragging about it. And the next month they do 20 K a month. Then the next month they do 15 K. Then they might do 40 K again, but it's like this like roller coaster, but it's because of the payment model that they're, they're trying to get people to sign up with this model. I'll tell you right now, this model will take you a little bit more time for you to have those 20, 30, 40 K months because you're relying very heavily on monthly recurring revenue, right? So with the packages paid in fulls, if you're selling a $2,000 package, you just need five clients, five sales to make an additional $10,000 a month. If you're going to do monthly recurring revenue to get to $10,000 a month, let's just say you're at 300, you're going to need around 30 to 35 clients. So it might take you some more time to get up to that stage, but you will have a much more stable business. Okay. So, um, my encouragement for you, if you're doing the packages, the two pay, three pay, again, we still help a lot of our clients with those when they're getting started to get that cash. You can do that. That's totally fine. On the back end, you want to re-sign them onto a monthly recurring revenue plan. Okay. So if you do six months and it costs $2,000 to work with you at the end of that six months, just roll into monthly recurring revenue. Okay. You don't need to sell another package. You can just let it keep going. Okay. If you want to do another package, go for it. But again, you're kind of playing that up and down game uh, and it can feel exhausting. Okay. It's not for everybody, right? So like if you like the high highs and you want to keep doing that, go for it. Right. This is just what I'm seeing seems and, and feels more comfortable. All right. More on offer creation. People still want more support. All right. People want one on one access more than they want courses, especially if you're doing health and fitness coaching. And if you're not already making 10 or $20,000 a month, start with one on one coaching first. Once you are full, AKA you can't take on any more clients. You have two paths. Path one is you hire assistant coaches who continue to do one-on-one -on -one coaching with your clients. Or path two is you have a lower ticket uh, membership model or a do-it-yourself program, and it's going to be a little bit less than your one-on-one -on -one rates. So always, always, always start off with one-on-one -on -one coaching first. And then once you get to a point where you are capped out, you're making good money, then you can decide on which path you want to go down. Okay. And with one-on-one -on -one support, you should have a lot higher compliance rate because people want to work with you and they have accountability built in. Sure. You could do it with the course, but I'm going to tell you, I prefer one-on-one. -on -one. All right. So the next category that we're going to talk about in this new way is that in the past, we used to rely very heavily on uh, more aggressive sales tactics, right? Of like just getting the deposit down or uh, getting them in, right? And um, making a decision on the call. And the market is more sophisticated now, okay? They have been burned by uh, coaches in the past. So now, before people just book on your calendar, we're finding that people need a lot more nurturing before the call. So what that could look like is starting off is sending a video sales letter before the call to help you stand out from what everyone else is doing. Okay. So the video sales letter could be a free training, right? That's typically how we, we, we categorize it. It's a free training that walks through your unique three to five steps of how you get your clients results and you send that to them before the call. Okay. And you might even have to send it to them before they book a call, right? The reason for that is that people just need more time to get to know, like, and trust you before they spend a lot of money with you. Right. Especially because they've been through this process before they know that when they get on a call with you, you're going to pitch them something. So you want to set up that pitch well to where you've given them all the information that they possibly need before coming on that call so that you've built enough of the know, like, and trust factor that they're ready to work with you. Okay. So step one of this is definitely having a video sales letter that you can give to somebody or a free training. Now, this is part of what we do with our clients. So if you guys are looking for support in this, as always, I'll have a link below uh, and you can learn more about what we do to see if it's a good fit. Now, once you have a video sales letter or free training ready, awesome. The next thing that you can do to help really nurture those leads is going to be YouTube videos. It can be long form videos, just like what you're watching now. 
a lot of our top spending clients will come in from Instagram, right? Instagram's a place they can find us. And then what they'll do is they'll go on YouTube before they book a call and they will binge content, okay? I post about two videos a week because it really helps indoctrinate and nurture people and show them uh, my, more of my personality of what it looks like when I actually talk to people, not on a reel where I'm like talking so fast, right? Like this is actually how I would talk when I coach clients. So they can feel that out before they book a call with me, right? And I already mentioned this, but the hard sales approach just doesn't work anymore. People want to work with people they trust and manipulating people on calls doesn't work, okay? Sure, you might get a deposit, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to ask for a refund. That doesn't mean they're gonna ch not charge back that amount, right? A chargeback is, let's say that you, you bill them $1,000 and then they call their credit card and say, hey, I want that canceled. And it'll just charge it back, right? That happens. And that happens with more aggressive sales strategies. Um, and, and I'll tell you this from firsthand experience, okay? Because if I look back at my journey um, as, a, as a business owner, when I first got started, I just got anybody in. I got anybody in, right? Because I was like, I need more people to test this method on. So I would get them in at any, any rate. I would even have some people pay me when they started getting results, right? And th some of those people were the worst clients. They were the worst clients. Sure, I, I used the double tie down. They told me, all right, yeah, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And you know, I would hold them to their, their statements and I get that deposit at the end only to go on to realize that those people that I had to do that on were the worst clients, were the worst clients. Now, I, I, I wanna be clear when I'm saying this, you still need to overcome objections. You still need to do double, double tie downs. You still need to do all the sales strategies that are gonna help you get this person to enroll, but you gotta do it to the, with the right people. And a lot of it is just like checking in with yourself and then also checking in on, on the conversation you're having. Is this a good conversation? Do I actually see this person getting results? Yeah. So that's kind of my big recommendation there is just like, you do want to do the strategies, right? But you want to do them in a very uh, respectable manner and don't close everybody just to close everybody. What it will do is it will hurt your retention and it will hurt your brand reputation. Okay, I'm telling you that right now. So you gotta find a better way to get people onto the call and ready and primed to make decisions before you talk to them. All right, number three is marketing. Okay, here are the big changes that we're seeing now in the marketing space. Organic is dead for audience growth. Okay, organic is dead for audience growth. Okay, reach continues to be at an all time low. Reach is the amount of eyeballs that see your piece of content it continues to drop, okay? It's at an all-time low. Last year, we saw a 32% decrease year over a year in the uh, amount of people that would see your content that actually follow you, okay? That number is decreasing, and so is the people who do not follow you, okay? So instead, I want you to use this three-step marketing system to get more eyeballs and build your brand, okay? All right, number one, paid ads, okay? We are in a pay to play uh, space right now. This is what it looks like. This is the landscape. You can choose and be like, I'm not gonna learn how to run Instagram ads. Or you could jump on and take advantage of it because it's only gonna get harder because more and more people are going to jump on. So jump on now while it's still in the easy slash learning phase for a lot of health coaches, okay? So we're gonna run ads to generate new eyeballs on your content every single day. I like ads, paid ads, Instagram, Facebook ads, more than I like things like influencer marketing, uh, also known as shout outs, or trying to create viral reels. And the reason for that is that it is very predictable. I know for about every $20 that I spend, I should get in front of about a thousand new people. How much time do you think it would take for you to send a thousand DMs to new people? Would you rather spend $20 in ads to get in front of a thousand people or send a thousand DMs? More than likely, you're gonna say hey, psh, 20 bucks all day, every day, right? As long as you have a good ad that can capture the right people, 
ads can be a very, very powerful tool to help you build your audience, okay? So start with ads. Ads bring people in, and that leads me to the second step. Instagram content will help you build a relationship with people. There's three types of content you wanna create on Instagram right now that's working. Number one is value content. That is, you know, here's three to five tips or here's three to five mistakes. Here's one thing I would do if I started over, right? Those things that are giving actionable value. The second thing you wanna create is vulnerability content. Vulnerability content puts yourself in the shoes of your audience. This is talking about your journey and the struggles you had when you started doing what you do. If you're a fitness coach, talk about the first time you went to the gym. How did you feel? Talk about the first time you stepped on a scale, right? Or talk about the first time that you did CrossFit or you did something new and share with them how you felt. Be vulnerable, right? Talk about the hard things. Talk about the problems that came up. Talk about the things that you felt insecure about because your ideal client is also experiencing those too, okay? So you wanna connect with them where they're at and say, hey, I see you and I've been in your shoes. Now, the third thing we wanna do after we've, we've created those value and vulnerability content is we wanna create vision content. Vision content is, is essentially, could be you or could be your ideal uh, other clients you've worked with, but showing them where they're gonna go. How is life gonna be different for them now? And you can put, again, put yourself in there. Hey, you know, here's where I was. Here's where I'm at now. Look at all this change. I'm so grateful for this. I attribute all of this to X plan, right? And if you want help with your X plan, DM me this word, click my link in bio, blah, 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 right? But the vision content helps people see into the future of where they're going. Very, very powerful, okay? So we run ads, get in front of new people. We create daily short form Instagram content. It's the best uh, over YouTube. I'll tell you why in the next step. The next step is going to be creating conversion content. So the reason that Instagram is better than YouTube, and um, I think it's better than Facebook too, I think you could, you could make an argument for both ways, is that you can have the DM messenger feature and you can message new leads, you can message new followers, you can talk to new people, you can network and connect in the DMs. And with conversion content, you can create this organically or you can do these as boosted posts or paid ads. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to promote free trainings, freebies, and things like that they are gonna get people to raise their hand and say, I want that, to tell us that they're interested at least remotely interested in our offer or service, okay? A two-step post, we wanna do those at least once a week, okay? This is, a two-step is, is essentially, you know, comment this word below and I'll send you blank. Or it could be a story. You know, tap this right here and I'll send this over, right? So for me, I'll, I'll often do polls. You could do a poll on your Instagram stories and then there can be, um, you know, do you want this? And then I'll, I'll put the poll as like, yes, and then uh, the poll underneath that is absolutely, like the only answer is yes. And anybody who says yes, I'm gonna go to their profile, send them the free training and see what they're working on to see if I can help. Instagram and Facebook, you can do that on. And again, right now, it, it kind of comes back to this new way, right? Like also with sales, I didn't really talk about this, but people aren't just booking on your calendar right out, right out the bat anymore. Like people do want to talk and connect with you first. So that's where Instagram and Facebook can become a really powerful platform is that I can have conversations every day with these people to see if I can help and nurture them over time instead of just waiting for them to, to book onto my calendar, right? So we'll do a two-step post uh, once a week. It could be for a freebie we've got. It could be a master class is coming up, something like that. And then once every six to eight weeks, we will do a promotion and we're gonna promote an offer. Okay, I've got three listed here just for, for examples. One of them could be, hey, I'm looking for five guys, right? So right now is June 25th. I could make a post that says, hey guys, I'm looking for five online coaches that wanna scale to $20,000 a month using Instagram ads. And I'm taking on five people for the month of July. If you're interested, comment this or DM this or click this, you know, I'll have 
the straight call to action of what they I want them to do. That is just a direct call to action to work with you. Another one that works really well is a scholarship application. And what we can do for a scholarship application is you promote uh, a full ride you, to your audience. You say, hey, in honor of my birthday, I'm doing a scholarship promotion where I'm giving one full ride scholarship for six months of customized training and nutrition programming. Okay, here are all the things you're gonna get. And in addition to the full ride, I'm also gonna be giving multiple partial scholarships. So if you're interested in the full ride or partial scholarships, apply here, right? And you'd say, you know, DM me, comment, or click link in bio, it doesn't really matter, right? Um, just, just promote it, okay? And uh, essentially what you do after that is, let's say you promote that for five days, and then uh, over the weekend, you would select a winner, and then on Monday, you'd let everyone else who did not win know and say, hey, um, unfortunately, you didn't win the full ride, but you did win a partial or you did qualify, probably better, you did qualify for a partial scholarship. You know, um, if you're interested in claiming this, let's hop on a quick call later this week and we can talk more about what that looks like, right? And then you get them onto a call and typically the partial scholarship you can do but around 20% off. Uh, works really well for the front end offer, okay? And honestly, with the scholarship promotion, if we come back up here and we use this model I talked about, you could just say, um, all right, so typically for us to get started, um, I'll, I'll do a down payment of $1,000 and then we do six months at uh, $400 a month. Um, if you sign up now, we'll drop the initial fee from 1,000 to 500 and instead of 400 a month, we'll do 350 whatever, right? I'm, I'm kind of making something up. Or you could just say, hey, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting rid of the initial fee and it's just 300 to 400 a month, right? You can play with it, right? But the, the key is we want it to kind of be around 20% of your like three to six month offer, okay? Okay, last one over here, conversion event. Um, this is where we can do a webinar or a challenge into a sales event, okay? So what that looks like typically is gonna be um, you'll promote something for 10 to 14 days. And if it's a webinar, you'll just host it one day. You'll promote it and you will go ham. <laughs> you'll go ham on inviting people. When I didn't have a, an audience, I would just sit on my phone and I would just, 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 just send voice memo after voice memo, inviting people, personally inviting people to this um, webinar or challenge. And I knew that if I got 100 people to register, I could get about 30 or so to attend live and another 10 to 20 would probably watch the recording, right? For the challenge, same thing, like you're gonna expect a 30-ish percent to show up. So if you want at least 20 people to show up for this thing, you need 100 people to say yes, okay? That might shock a lot of you, but you just gotta go ham and invite as many people to this as possible, all right? So this is the marketing strategy that we use. Ads to get new eyeballs, content to help them build a relationship, and then conversion content on Instagram to turn those people who have been consuming your content into clients, okay? Now, we can do some retargeting ads and stuff like that. I didn't include that in this video, um, but that is another strategy that I'll often use in addition to the ads to get more eyeballs and awareness. We can also do some ads that are gonna get people to stick up their hand for this free training. So those, those ads would also be in the conversion content section of this. Okay, step number four in this new way of growing an online coaching business is all around systems, okay? Systems, by its definition, are people and infrastructure that will help you automate growth and just the overall operations of your business, right? The first part of your system or hire you wanna make now, more than ever, is gonna be an appointment setter, okay? This is someone who can manage your DM inbox. They can also manage your emails, uh, anyone who completes an application. They are the initial point of contact between uh, a new follower, a new lead, and booking a call with you to talk about your coaching service, okay? Now, typically for these roles, what I like to do is I like to hire them at $15 an hour, and then I like to bonus them $50 a sale, a close. I know some people will do an appointment setter, will do like a, a base of, uh, let's say like 1,500 to 2K, and then they'll do just commission only. 
I don't really like that, to be honest. I, I really like doing hourly. It's easier for me to, to manage. And I just have my setters clock in, clock out. And in total, like I've got two and they both work part time. And uh, each of them, they work about 20 hours a week and they'll make around two grand to 2,500 for those 20 hours a week. So if you're getting started and you're only making, let's say 10 to $15,000 a month, you can hire one of them and, and you work the other hours they're not working, right? This is a huge uh, task for you to grow a business is to be in the DMs talking to leads, okay? And then once you're doing 20K a month or so, 15K a month, you might wanna hire a second one so you've got full day coverage there. Okay. All right. Next part of the system is using go high level to keep track of your DMS and leads. This software does so much heavy lifting for us. It has our funnels. It has our calendar booking, and it's also where our appointment setters that we just talked about in this last section are managing our pipeline. Okay. So I'm going to pull this up real quick, just to give you guys a sneak peek of what it looks like. All right. So I've got it pulled up here and you'll see, uh, this is my messenger pipeline. So this is just from Instagram alone. When somebody responds to one of our initial messages, they automatically get placed into this new leads category. And then our goal is just to drag and drop these, uh, these, these cards, essentially they're, they're drag and droppable, right? I want to drag it and pull it over to the next section. Okay, this two-step post, it actually references the conversion content I talked about earlier. So if you do have a two-step post, I've actually created automations in here that when they respond, they'll automatically be added to this category. So if I did a, hey, I'm looking for five, automatically they would pop in here. And I, and I want that because I don't want them to get lost. And uh, as you can see, I've got a lot of new leads who are just conversations and DMs that are, are new. But if someone says, I want something, they have higher intent, so I actually created a separate uh, category here where they'll automatically get placed in there just from some simple automations I have set in here. All right, so I'll have a conversation with them. If I think they're a good fit, just from the first two or three questions, we'll move them over to prospecting, okay? Prospecting is just, we're having an open conversation, trying to see what their goals are, what they've tried, all that fun stuff. And if we think we can help, we'll then offer them a call and say, hey, you know, um, I really enjoy connecting based off what you're struggling with. I think we can point you in the right direction. Would you be interested in hopping on a quick 15 minute call later this week with someone from my team? You know, that's like an abbreviated version of that, right? And once we offer that, we move them over to a call offered. If they say, yes, I would love that, then we send them a link and then we move them over to booking link sent. Okay, this is how I run my entire business. We have one for Messenger, so this is our Messenger pipeline, and then we also have one for our ads. So this is the same exact thing. I just like to separate them out just a little bit because it helps me um, just look at a glance and see where our pipeline's at and where most of our leads are coming from. All right, so let's come back to our sheet here. Go high level to set up and keep track of your DMs and leads. Game changer. This is another service that we help our clients with because, uh, yeah, you got to stay organized. You got to stay organized to grow a coaching business. You just do. All right. All right. Next part in systems is you're going to want to have an assistant coach that's going to help you with fulfillment. And typically, this is going to be when you're at, I'm going to say around like 30 ish clients or so, is when you're going to start to want, all right, do I want to make a hire? Right and we kind of talked about this with the model earlier above, uh, do I want to keep doing the one-on-one -on -one coaching support or do I want to pivot to more of that group's uh, style? But regardless of which one you choose, once you decide, hey, I'm capped on my one-on-one -on -one right now, I need some more support, you're gonna to wanna to hire an assistant coach who can support with coaching. Doesn't matter if it's group, doesn't matter if it's one-on-one, -on -one, you're gonna need uh, help there. Now. What you wanna pay that person uh, typically is gonna be, I put 20 to 30% of program cost. I really like it to be closer to 20%, okay? And that, that may seem crazy. I'm gonna pay someone 20% and I keep the, the rest of it. Well, if you understand business, there's a lot more expenses that are gonna go into this, okay? If your coach makes 20% and then your acquisition cost for you to get clients is 20%, there's 40% off the top that it's gone. Okay, so you have 60% remaining. If eventually 
you hire an appointment setter and you hire a, uh, a closer to take calls for you, there's another 15% off of the ticket. So now you're left with 45% of margins and you still haven't paid for the software. You still haven't paid for all the other things that go into online an online business. And I see a lot of people do this wrong and they'll flip it. They'll be like, I'll take 20% and I'll give the coach 80%. And you're not gonna be able to grow, especially with paid ads and have a, any type of profit margin at all. And you're essentially gonna start working for free. Do not do that. I'm telling you, do not do that. You want to control fulfillment. You wanna be in charge of fulfillment and make sure that everyone's getting the, the, the results and success that you wanna have. And the only way you do that is by creating systems that ensure that. And when you do that, that's gonna cost money, <laughs> okay? So I'm gonna encourage most of you guys to stay around 20% of your program cost. So if you're charging 400 bucks a month, $100 to the coach is 25%, right? So that's actually not, not too bad, 25%. Um, but again, if you guys are going to 500 bucks a month, 450, 500 bucks a month, then still keep it at $100 a head. But typically between like 75 to $100 a head is a, is a great range. I tend to pay people a little bit more. Like I know some business coaches in, in the space will encourage even less, like 15%. But you know, I really like 20 to 30%, especially if they're good coaches, because you want to keep them. Okay, next thing is going to be eventually at some point, you're going to want to outsource enrollment slash sales. Okay, for you to do this, you need at least two to three sales calls a day. Okay. Not talking triage or connection calls. I mean like two to three sales calls where you're giving a pitch every day because somebody who wants this position wants to be able to make a decent amount of money and also for you to hire them, they need to have a lot of calendar space. And for them to have calendar space, they need to be working with you pretty much full time. So you wanna wait until you have at least two to three calls a day. And once you do, you're gonna to wanna to hire somebody who can really uh, head that department and you're gonna to wanna to work with them and teach them how to do your process, how to enroll people, giving them the links, giving them the scripts, all of that fun stuff. Now, you don't have to do this. Like there are some coaches that I know that will do uh, DM sales. Like they'll just send a video or they'll, they'll talk back and forth, tell the price. But again, I, uh, I don't encourage that, especially if you're doing anything less than $30,000 a month because you want every last uh, lead and drop to counts, like you want to make the most out of it, especially if you're running, spending money on ads, like you want to make sure that you don't lose anybody. And you know, anytime you're selling an offer that has like over, it's over a thousand dollars, it's highly suggested to have a sales call, right? Because we talked about it here, people want to build trust with you and hopping on a call with somebody does just that. It is the kickstart of them getting one-on-one -on -one support from you, right? When we get on this call, we don't need to use the hard sales for, for, to get people across the line. Now, again, we do want to still objection handle. We still want to get you know, the, the things done that we need to get done to make sure that they're going to sign up, but we're not going to twist their arm and, and, and make it and manipulate them into starting to work with us, right? But we do need a process around that. Okay. And then once you're booking so many calls a day and you don't have time for it, you're going to need to hire somebody who can get into this role. So you can focus most of your time. Like one, uh, there's a few things here. One, I want you to enjoy your time in life, like do those things that fill you up. And also you can spend more time in marketing to generate more leads. You are typically the spokesperson for your business. If you're the entrepreneur or CEO. So it's your job to tell more people about your offer. You are a salesperson, uh, um, you're a sales spokesperson essentially for your business. And the only way that you're gonna continue to get more leads is by marketing more, creating more content, providing more value, doing more things that just provide goodwill to the marketplace, okay? So uh, ultimately, like how your stuff should go is we automate, you know, we automate the DMs, we automate some of the backend follow-ups, we automate the fulfillment process, so by this stage, when we're, before we outsource sales, really the only thing that we're doing is marketing, creating content, we're doing sales, and then we're also overseeing, right? We're overseeing our assistant coach and appointment setter, okay? And then once we outsource sales or we hire, make, make a hire for sales, uh, we're then gonna be full-time like 
marketing, and then management. So like to kind of give you a breakdown of what this looks like for me in the mornings, I create content. Okay. I, I create content in the mornings. I work on projects like landing pages, funnels and stuff that are going to help with growth. Right. And then right around like noon or one is when I start to transition into more of a management role, right? Checking on clients, checking on the team, um, hosting coaching calls, doing all that fun stuff. And I'll do that in the afternoon, but I, I, I got to keep putting in that time, uh, to, to continue to generate more leads, market my services, et cetera. So this is what we're seeing in, in the space, right? These are the four things. We've got uh, the offer changing to more month recurring. We've got sales. We've got to provide more value, need more nurturing, sending videos before the call, uh, getting into YouTube if you can to start providing that value. Marketing, we're in a pay to play game now, right? In a world. So we've got to learn how to run ads. And if you don't, you're gonna be left behind, right? And once we run ads, we make good content and we create conversion content. Uh, we can also have these ran as ads that are going to get people to stick their hand up to tell you they want it. And then we need systems to keep that high level of touch, ensure we get really good results and give you your time back. Okay. These are the four stages that uh, we take all of our clients through. We do them one at a time and for all the clients we work with, we work them all uh, with a, on a one-on-one -on -one basis to make sure that they have each of these things set up so that they can grow their business with ease and not uh, feel this like, oh, like keep hitting a wall, right? So if you're an online coach and you're looking for support in this, you're like, Matt, this is super helpful. Thank you so much for sharing all this. Like I absolutely could see myself doing this and I, I wanna learn, I wanna learn how to run ads. I wanna learn how to make better content, how to sell without being you know, salesy. And, you know, I, I do want to hire, I want to, I want to hire a team so that I'm not doing everything. <laughs> if that sounds like you, I get you. That was me too. All right. And then that's, that's why I put together the offer we have now where we help coaches with this stuff. Okay. So if you're interested at all in getting mentorship and coaching around this stuff, I'll have a link below to book a call with my team. And on the call, you know, this, again, we're not a very salesy team by any means. Like we want to make sure we can help anybody that we extend an offer to. Okay. Now on the call, we'll go over the bottlenecks that we see that you're experiencing in your business. And we'll tell you what we should, what we do, right? If we were in your shoes, we'll say, Hey, this is what we do. And if we think we can work with you, we'll tell you what it looks like at the end of the call. All right. So if that sounds interesting, click the link below, book a call, and we will chat soon. Thanks guys.